Hello, beautiful Libra squad. Welcome to my channel, The Intuitive Teacup. That is me. If you are watching this tarot video today, you associate with the sign of Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Jupiter even, in some capacity. Um, we are here to do your monthly tarot spread for career and finances. This is going to be roughly mid-February into mid-March. As always, in these general messages, um, I ask for you to come into them with an open heart and an open mind, knowing that not every message will be yours. Pieces and parts of this uh, reading will very likely resonate for you, but ultimately it is up to you to take away only the messages that serve you in some capacity, that resonate for you, inspire you, motivate you, confirm something you needed to hear, but also maybe enlighten you to some new idea that is helpful. Anything that feels foreign or strange, you can drop it like it's hot. You can release that message. It means it's probably a message for someone else. Um, I always recommend that you come into these readings um, and give them time to resonate with you. Allow yourself to sit with the messages because not everything will click instantly. So don't put pressure on yourself to make it all fit. It, it probably won't, right? Give it time. That's absolutely normal. Um, yeah, what else do you need to know? Everything else is in that description box below for you. Uh, what I'm doing here today the decks I'm using, as well as my social media channels. I am The Intuitive Teacup on Facebook and Instagram, as well as .com. Check out my website if you want to learn more about me, about my tarot journey. Um, and yeah, I always ask if you can, like, share, subscribe. It's a really nice exchange of energy, right? The reading is free, so why not hit the like button if, if you like this channel, if you like what I'm doing. I appreciate it, and it helps get those messages out there to those who want to hear them and to those who need to hear them. That's my whole spiel, Libra. I'm happy to have you here today. We're gonna hop in. I got one more deck to shuffle for you and we will jump into your reading. For Libra, career, money, finances, internships, retirements, <laughs> change of career path. What do we have for the Libra squad out there? You guys had a kick-ass love reading uh, about a reconciliation. So again, don't force that to be your story, but if, if that's at all in your, in your mind, I would check out that love reading. It was, it was like incredible, it was really cute. Um, and you also have a general monthly reading for February into March, so go ahead and check that out if you so desire. One more shuffle for Libra, career, money, finances, advice and guidance, career, money and finances. Career, money and finances, Libra, advice and guidance. Cool. All right, guys, let's do it. So bottom of your deck, you're relieving some sort of burden. You do have a caring connection and the angel of love. So yeah, love is... Love and embracing those that, who you love, be it romantic or platonic love, is looking real good for you guys. Uh, the avenues in which you are going to, um, I'm sorry, the sources in which you are going to gain um, joy, freedom, happiness, um, like a lighthearted feeling, it's being surrounded by the people you love, your soul tribe, your kids, your parents, your best friend. Spend time with the people you love, particularly if you have a Leo in your life or a Gemini, that's going to be really important to you. And like, guys, I can't even make it up door to romance and action uh and particularly a capricorn too may play into this and it might even be someone you work with uh, or want to build a, a family with woman holding a coin like an, an investment banker or something uh you might meet this person when you're trying to get a loan for something or again someone who you who you've come across in your career field in your career path you may have the same goals and desires to build the same thing there's like a, a really playful kind of flirty chase to this uh, you, Libra, it feels like you have your mind set on, on the future and, and driving ahead, but what you don't realize is like there, there's someone trying to catch up with you. That's what your whole love reading felt like, too, and I'm not trying to make this a love reading, but like literally those cards that came out, like they will not be ignored. So again, if you're interested in looking for love, put the vibes out there because, yeah, there, there's going to be some sort of return on that. You're going to spark someone's interest who wants to, they want to play with you. They want a little action. I just heard that poison song, I Want Action Tonight satisfaction all right brett michaels god bless him i don't know if he's a libra i'm not sure what he is but anyway we're leaving some sort of burden and, and yeah actually it actually feels like even if it's not romantic again a business partner friendship um people in in your circle of friends your network they open your heart up to accepting help to to feeling nourished to something with the healing cups of water they provide being around their energy it's very um spiritual it's very soothing some of you may be going to talk to a, a counselor or a therapist or a psychologist. And if it's not that, this is actually a really beautiful metaphor for going to your best friend, going to your mother, going to that person who you love and trust and feel like you can unload some heavy burdens and just kind of talk it out with them. It's saying being around them, it's very healing. It's like they're this little like yen, um, sorry, like Zen yogi in your life. Um, 
healing energy. Uh, this is a card of Taurus. It's the Hierophant. And then Queen of Cups, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. So that, that may mean something to you. Some of you could be Libra, Scorpio, Cuspers. Um, but, and it's also saying to me, like, you go to them for advice or counseling and they have beautiful words to, they have beautiful words to share with you, but they're not enforcing it upon you. They're not shoving it down your throat. They're not telling you what to do or how to do it. They're just, they're like posing suggestions. It's like they're floating it in the air. Like, well, have you ever thought about this? It's very, um, yeah, what they're, what the, what they're sending out to you, it's based in love but it is guidance. It's mentorship that's going to open up your mind. It's going to illuminate you. Uh, it's going to help navigate you through this difficult dilemma or situation where you're not, you're not quite sure how to go yet. With the hangman, it's, it's delay, it's pause. It's needing to assess what's going on and decide, how do I want to transform this situation? You guys, look. The horses, right? The dark and the light. It's very Cancerian. And this is, this is a um, Cancer card specifically. Uh, the chariot is always driven by our, our two sphinxes that are black and white, our two horses, right? Granted, these are different decks, you guys. The depiction of this, this pause and delay, what's inevitably coming together is partnership. So again, even if it's not romantic, and for some of you, maybe it isn't, there's collaboration that's going to be like the yin to your yang. There's business partnership here. Some of you don't know who that is yet, but when you meet them, you'll know. When you'll meet them, it, you will, it will click instantly. It will, <clears throat> they will make you feel very valued and very honored. They recognize your skill and talents. They recognize things in you that you don't even sometimes see in yourself. It, it, it gives you a huge boost of confidence. They do great things for your ego in the positive sense. Yeah, you guys combining or collaborating together, it might be with an Aquarius. It, it was divinely guided. It was destined. It was written in the stars. And it's going to like, I almost said launch you into fame. That doesn't have to mean celebrity. But if you're trying to get a product or a business or this off the ground, working with this person puts you and your, your person in the spotlight. Uh, or you and your product, your business, your whatever. It puts you in the spotlight. It's advantageous for the two of you to collaborate or to at least exchange ideas. Even if it's not a business partnership, they're going to be a good like cohort. They're going to be a good... Um, a good resource, a good ally for you to, yeah, to, to bounce ideas around and like it launches you into a new cycle of, of fame, of fortune, of fate, of destiny. You have the wheel of fortune and the star. It's written in the stars. You were meant to do great things. But yeah, currently you guys are in a state of delay or pause assessment mode, trying to figure out how to, the right, how to go about this the right way. I don't know if this is the same person. The one who you go to and their, their energy is very spiritual. Like you, you can just unload all, all, the, all your worries, all your anxieties and talk things through with them. It could literally be a therapist or a counselor or someone who, who's a healer of some sort. It could be the person who's giving you a massage on Saturday. Do you know what I mean? It's someone you're just like, boy, have I had a day. And it's like you want to tell them about it. They're a person who has uh, internal... Lots of internal strength and guidance, and they're willing to shine that light, that knowledge on you. Uh, card of Virgo, card of um, Taurus, if that means anything to you. Yeah, they are going to, again, they're not going to force it down your throat. They're going to say it in a very um, gentle way, you know, pitching or, or proposing ideas to you. It's going to pull up something from your subconscious of, of the past, and I do think it's all good. It has to do with combining bank accounts or, or partnership, a collaboration with someone from your past. That again, it's like, it's a surefire success. I just keep getting that. Even if it's just a small little project, if it's just a, a small little gig and you're looking for that person to, I don't know, what, whatever, fill in the blank, that, that key role that you can't quite fit or fill, you don't know who, it's someone from the past. You, you may end up calling someone from the past who you probably shared some sort of love connection with. It might be a Leo or an Aquarius. You have lots of fire and, and, and I do want to say a specifically Aquarius energy. You have the star twice. <clears throat> you may have had an awkward situation with this person when, when you um, parted ways or called it quits. I don't know if it was romantic. It may have been where you, you're sensing that this person is very vulnerable or very susceptible to you entering back into their life. And so you want to do it in a way that is very nurturing and caring. You, I don't know why it's like you don't want them to feel attacked. May, if it was romantic, it may have ended a little bit awkward, but not to the point where you couldn't reconcile. But there's happiness and joy in this reunion. Again, a card of cancer, the chariot. Yeah, there's teamwork here. Libra, this is an incredible reading. Like your cards just keep getting better. 
there's uh, uh again being around this person who really champions you who cheerleads you on who yeah who, who wants to collaborate with you as i was saying they do great things for your ego where it puts you in a mindset where you are much more confident you're much more uh, wow you're much more capable of making executive decisions the power player um thinking clearly with authority laying down the line right it has nothing to do with being um unfair or cold-hearted it's just let's stick to the facts this isn't working how do we get the money better it, it puts you in a position where you're seeing things with uh, like utter clarity where you weren't before where there was a little bit of um pause or delay or um indecision again analysis there is some sort of partnership that comes in and whether or not you choose to work with them it there's an epiphany or it illuminates you some sort of idea and then boom your ten of cups your fairy tale ending and even on a much smaller scale this could indicate the pieces of the puzzle that just weren't fitting together at one point someone comes in and delivers some sort of message or options to you and boom it sets you off and like you're, you're raking in the dough or your creativity just comes flooding out it does feel like it may have to do with that you may be creatively stifled creatively constipated racking your brain to, to get that golden idea up and out to the surface again spend time with people you love people you trust people who um have a positive impact on your energy on your vibration not energy vampires not the negative nellies not the people who are just like woe is me life is terrible like no run from them if that's the case if that's representing like the dark energy in your life the person who's the slacker or weighing you down mentally emotionally physically charge ahead like leave them in the dust because they're not they're just not helping you at this time yeah moving towards your like what is your what is your fate what is your destiny your divinely guided path keep moving forward again a lot of cards here are indicating you are at a crossroads you are stuck on a problem think it through but eventually it is asking you you know forward action taking one step oh, you know versus just staying stagnant doing nothing at all it's almost like even by taking the wrong step you'll learn something from it and you'll be able to course correct so don't be afraid to take some sort of direction um don't be afraid to take some sort of um like progressing things forward um it, yeah you're internally conflicted on how to go just go out and do it just go out and explore it'll be an adventure no matter what happens there will be something to be gained by it because if you stay where you are it's making you moody or or frustrated or sad or anxious or something about the current situation it's emotionally void so move towards doing what you love it may take a while to get the ingredients right you may have to go back and forth you may have to course correct but even something that doesn't work out ultimately it is informing you of how to do it better the next time you're you're learning by the process and there is a sense of excitement uh, and flirting actually with this too again something about um pairing with a partner or or a collaboration you may end up catching feelings for someone so i mean i guess be careful with that particularly if it is in the workplace but i mean these cards would indicate you really don't have much to lose Th this person seems very um very inspiring you have a lot of cards of aquarius and a good amount of fire energy aries leo sagittarius they help you to make some sort of difficult judgment call um and it's not that you the thing is i don't think you're wavering on what the right answer is eventually i think it comes to you but there may be um a small sort of lacking in confidence to actually take charge and especially if you're in charge of a group project to be like okay guys this is how we're doing it again that person in your life that's cheering you on it could very well be your husband or wife they they nudge you in the direction be like all right this is how we're doing it like executive in charge making commands make making the precise uh decisions <clears throat> so let's see your current energy is wheel of fortune yeah you're you're ready for change you're ready to progress forward you have the wheel of fortune twice in a career spread guys not to mention the the freaking ten of cups where did that go yeah you got the ten of cups coming in if cups doesn't represent love though i gotta be honest for a lot of you it did especially granted your love reading it was amazing um if it doesn't have to do with love cups i always think you know money is a currency there is energy flow here so filling your cup back and forth money is going to be good and it does come from an idea that it already exists within you within your subconscious you just have to get it up and out to the surface this person helps pull it out of you 
If they're not a counselor or therapist or psychologist, again, it could be your best friend, but they are very much in tune with spirituality. They have a broader viewpoint. They have a wider sense or a broader perspective on life. So where you, okay, where you may be too narrowly focused, only seeing day to day or being too too caught up in the exact details of the dilemma, this person asks you to sort of zoom out and be like, all right, well, you know, think broader, think wider. Like, what is the ultimate goal here? How do we, like, they pull you out of a, a narrow viewpoint. And it's not bad. It's not that you're cocky or arrogant or egocentric if it's just this. But they allow you to see things from a different perspective. It could be a Gemini. Yeah, so there's some sort of plan or contract you want to move forward with. But you're, you're lacking the, I get this for you every time, Libra. I'm sorry if it's not your story, but there's a lacking of confidence that you have that is pause, it's giving you delay. All these, all these cards of delay, assessment, analysis, uh, indecision, uh, being at a crossroads, not knowing which way to take action forward. This is saying the wheel is turning no matter what you do. It is your destiny to move forward with this. So even if you haven't figured out like, Something of, this is in metaphor, something about the contract of like the, the little, the little script, the little text. This is a weird way of phrasing it. The minute details, you don't need to worry about that yet. It's almost like by progressing the wheel forward, by taking action on something that you are excited about, you are very inspired with. Even in, in terms of a relationship, you guys are already flirting, but you might not know exactly how they feel or how it could all work out. It's like you're worrying too much. There, there's a sense of just going out to enjoy it with Page of Wands. Uh, my Indiana Jones card. It's going to be fun. It's going to be an adventure. This is exciting. I'm curious. Let's go discover it. Let's go explore something here. You have that coming up twice. Here it does feel more weighted and heavy, but what's interesting is it's falling out with the Wheel of Fortune. It's like Whatever heaviness or indecision you're, you're facing or are struggling with, you know, the internally conflicted, how do I negotiate this? How do I navigate this? Move forward with it. It's almost like answers will reveal themselves all in good time. You're going after this and feel a little bit blindfolded because not all the details or the, the all, not all the information has been revealed to you, but you're already sitting on an idea that that has potential for growth because you've already seen it grow a little bit. It's not an ace, it's a page. So this is something you've been working with for some time. That doesn't mean it, you know, it's been years, it could be months, but you've got the idea, you're excited about it. So why not, it's almost like why not give in and give yourself the benefit of the doubt that you will figure it out along the way. You don't need to have every single thing mapped out just yet. And that is sort of a Libra quality. You want to approach things very balanced, you know, very, you know, harmoniously. You don't want to jump the gun on anything. It's not saying do it, you know, in, um, I don't know how to say it, <laughs> in a sloppy way. Because Libra, you wouldn't do that. That's not Libra-esque at all. But yeah, it may involve like, it's sort of like rocking the scales a little bit to take some sort of like emotional risk. And so maybe it does have to do with love. I don't know, guys. I'm trying to read for career, but bear with me here. So let's look at your challenger focus. Stop it. The garden and the gate. Okay, yeah, taking a risk. The safety zone, being in your garden. Things are lush and abundant and good, but what if you were to step outside the garden? It's going to be different. You don't know what's out there. Where is it? But you're intrigued by it. You think there's, there's some excitement out there. There's got to be something I'm missing. And there is. Again, in the, in the safety zone, any foreign tarot, it's the comfort zone. It's not bad, but there's no, there's no sense of change or growth when you're at a four. It, it's sort of like the pressing pause. It's very much the delay, the assessment, the thinking about it, right? Thinking about, okay, well, I have these three cups and they're okay, but I really want this fourth one. I really want this new job. I really want this promotion. I really want a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a whatever, right? A new house, a new apartment, whatever it is for you. I'm, I'm waiting to find that perfect match. I'm waiting to find that cup that feels amazing because right now you don't feel amazing. It's very complacent. It's a little bit bored. It's even a little bit moody. Why am I not getting what I want? Because you haven't left the comfort zone. That's what this is saying. Sorry, that sounded harsh. You know I love you, Libra, right? A little tough love, never hurt. <clears throat> yeah, because you know what, guys? If you were to leave the comfort zone, that's where the money is. It's almost like a tapped resource. That's what I get from this. You've gotten all the money you can out of this. You may have hit a position in your current job where 
you've reached the peak amount of money they're willing to pay you or the you know peak salary that they can pay you for that job title so it's almost like to expand your bank account your money you have to kind of expand your limits of, of what you're willing to do and achieve and accomplish it doesn't have to be literal travel for all of you but particularly if you run your own business it's reaching out to more clients in different areas in a different capacity trying to market to them or sell something to them in a slightly different way than you've gone at it before, particularly using your creativity, particularly drawings or illustrations or, or something like cartoons. I, I don't know what that would be. But again, talk to your friends, particularly your artist friends who maybe already dabble in, in I don't know, whatever, illustrating already. There's something about that where, yeah, it's like they... Even if it's not romantic, they, they meet your cup, they match your cup, they, they give you some idea and you're like, that's what I've been trying to do this whole time. It's like they enlighten you to something. They enlighten you to some sort of message. And again, they meet your cup. These horses align, right? Where, oh goodness, I lost it. Driving me nuts. Where's my card? There it is. Where once these horses weren't on the same page, one was like leading the charge and the other one was like, uh, getting lost in, lost behind, left behind. This it represents you internally, just to be very clear. But it's almost like your creative block, your mental block, they align, they meet in the middle, and then this bat is ready to transform into, into Dracula. I don't know, whatever, it doesn't matter, right? Transformation from card number 13, or I'm sorry, card number 12, the hangman, to card number 13, death, transition, renewal, rebirth. Leaving things behind that aren't serving us, decluttering our mind and leaving all that behind to embrace like new golden opportunities. For a lot of you, that epiphany does have to do with a, a new area, a new radius, a new demographic, a new, like a new target group. That's where the money lies. Again, stagnancy, things are okay, but they're just not changing. It's very much encouraging you to leave the comfort zone, whatever that is. Maybe that just involves uh, learning a new skill or... Or asking for a raise, ask like it, the idea of leaving the comfort zone to go after all that you've ever wanted and desired financially, or, or th things that you see great value attached to. You want to go after that, but it does. It involves leaving the comfort zone, and that doesn't necessarily mean leaving your job. That doesn't have to mean leaving your current role, but trying something new. That it, I will say, it intimidates you a little bit, but you don't even know how magical you are. How I was saying, this other person in your life, they see you as like the million dollar package they see you as full of creative potential and love what you're doing it, it's it's because you have so much passion and love for it this person helps it's extract it out of you there's something about in, in intuitively emotionally you guys are very much yeah like just in tune with one another and what this person is trying to do again in a gentle way not a forceful way they're trying to like get you to like um, dig deep into your subconscious and bring out those ideas that it's like, you didn't even know they were there. It's like waking the dead of these amazing ideas you have inside of you. They call them out, like, you know, they're blowing the horn, they're blowing the whistle to wake the dead, representing th this creativity, this splash of excitement, this love that you have inside of you, they bring it up into the surface. <clears throat> yeah, you were the magician. All the tools are on your table. All, all of what you want to create already exists within the potential inside of you. It's just getting it up and out. As within, so without. As above, so below. So yeah, again, faith and spirituality. It could also be like a spirit guide, your guardian angel, your, your God, your universe, whatever you believe in. If it's not a physical manifestation of like a person that, that's extracting this from you, it could be just spending more time with your with your faith and spirituality and you know tapping into your subconscious spending time in meditation or whatever for you to get those ideas up into the surface but for most of you i think it is an actual person having conversations and discussing it that will be helpful to you <clears throat> it's going to unblock those or yeah unleash those creative blocks that you're struggling with so what is the help available to you yeah, okay, so staying in the comfort zone as long as you are being productive with your thoughts. Staying in the comfort zone doesn't mean sitting on the couch and watching Netflix. If you are not quite ready to go after something yet because you are still very much like thinking it through, and you are, and that's fine, that is a very Libra-esque quality, there's nothing wrong with that. Because when you guys make decisions, again, you, you need to be making executive decisions, unwavering, the absolute truth with clarity, confidence, precision. So if you're not quite there yet, make sure you're taking time to think it through, <clears throat> but make sure, again, make sure you are thinking long-term. 
It's almost like you're trying to put out one fire, but you're not recognizing by doing that, there's a whole, like, there's a whole line of fires to be put out. So rather than focusing on the one, what if we thought big scale, big terms? So we, it's almost like we can, um, we can put out all the fires at once with, with one big bucket of love. I know that's like a really stupid metaphor, but you know, hang with me here. It's something about, instead of thinking about the thousand dollar idea, think about the one million dollar idea. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's something about the narrow viewpoint. You're not even seeing how big, how great, something about how much of a, like a grand scale this potential could be. Your person sees it, your, your collaborator sees it, your business partner sees it. But it does involve, I just want to say like flying off the handlebars a little bit, trying something a little bit wacky and insane and different, something that it's almost by logic, you're very quick to dismiss it. Like, no, 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 that's ridiculous. But this person sees something in that idea and it's trying to awaken you to the idea of maybe messing around with the ingredients. Because doing it the same way, it's gotten you to where you are now, so it's not for nothing, but nothing is ever going to change now. So if you want growth, if you want productivity if you want more money you kind of need to let go of like the bullshit excuses of why you're not willing to try this new thing when you release them and just embrace this new idea this flowing cup of creativity it's almost like look look optimistically of how great this could be rather than all the things that could go wrong yeah launch it send it off into the world try that new product you're you're or send out t- okay send out test samples of that new product you're trying to try launch the website reach out to people in other cities network contact people i, I don't know call people on the phone try selling yourself in in new ways apply to those jobs that you you don't even think you're qualified for you have nothing to lose Something about work hard, play hard. Enjoy it. Again, think of it as an idea. I'm sorry. Think of it as avenues of discovery, possibility, curiosity, adventure. There's something very innocent about the page. He doesn't go into it with all this baggage of worry and what if and oh my goodness, I'm so scared. He's just kind of like, hey, there's some cool pyramids. That's awesome. Like it's, it's very chill. My page of wands is very chill, but he's excited about what he's taking in. Um... Yeah, he's unburdened by things of the past. He's, he's going places. He knows that there's more up ahead. And with, with wands, there's faith and spirituality that you are headed towards your North Star. This path you're walking down, there's no need to be nervous because you are protected. It is divinely guided by, by spirit, by your angels, you know, your, your people, your ancestors. There is going to be some point where you have either an epiphany or a new idea of how to move forward. I just keep wanting to say with, with love, with creativity, maybe that has to do with the, the um, type of career you work in. You guys got the door to value card. Let's just appreciate that for a second. And it does have to do with a major transformation. Um, it may involve a Scorpio, but it doesn't necessarily have to. Th- these are the, um, and Sagittarius for that matter too. It might be a Scorpio Sag Cusper. I don't know what that has to do with it. Anyway, um, these are the arrows, well, you know, Sagittarius being the archer. These are the bow and arrows. Like he launches into the world, excitement, enthusiasm, passion, inspiration, whatever you're excited about. This is trying to get other people excited about it too. It's selling yourself in a way where it's impossible to look away. It's almost like the magic in your eyes, the the, the fire you feel inside to want to move forward with this, it's sending it out into the world because it's almost like it's going to attract people, like bees to honey. People will want to invest in your idea. People will want to buy your product. People will want to invest in you. They want to buy you. So make sure, again, you come at this with confidence. This is the best product, and let me tell you why, right? Unshaking, unwavering confidence. Executive decisions, authority, but also really good with their words, really skilled communicators. Um, leaders giving speeches the written word witty funny charismatic very much it's sword energy that's you libra because you're presenting as the king and not the queen and the queen of, of swords is your card because you're presenting as the king it's tapping into whether you're male or female the more masculine energy of not being led you are leading the charge the that's a really great metaphor for this Both of these are you, but it also is symbolic of you leading the charge and others will follow. You're not trying to take commands or take direction from this other person because it's asking you to step into power. You are not the receptive um, person. 
yeah, it's like you are you are giving the orders. You are you are spreading the word. You are it's this. I keep doing it with my fingers. It's like spreading stuff out, communication, ideas, creativity. <coughs> Excuse me. I feel like this top is too low for Instagram. I have regrets. Anyway, moving on. Okay. Or did I say Instagram, YouTube? Your final advice or guidance. Faith and spirituality, also committing to the idea and moving forward with it. Also, the one who speaks in front of groups, even if he's not certain, even if he's not confident, even if he's self-conscious, there's an idea of fake it till you make it. You already got the hat and gown on. You may as well move forward with the speech. Some of you are valedictorians or giving speeches at some sort of educational conference. You are like a a scholastic winner, I want to say. And it, yeah, it's like other people are looking up to you and they're like in awe of all that you've accomplished. It's funny, you don't see yourself like that. You're very humble, which is beautiful, but there is value in recognizing your worth. How freaking awesome you are because you have really valuable advice and guidance to give to other people. You inspire other people. You give them hope. People are going to want to talk to you about your, about your accomplishments, how you got to where you are today. So if that's not you now, forewarning in the future, you are going to be like the sun in other people's sky. You are going to be the angel of love that that shows people it is possible. This is how I got, you know, how I launched my business. This was my path to success. You might be a life coach, showing other people the light, giving them encouragement and warmth. Because that's what this other person is doing for you. They're helping you get to your ten of cups. It seems like eventually you're going to help other people get to their ten of cups. (coughs) if there's people in your life telling you to not go for this if there's people in your life who are naysayers and they're only they're only providing you with the well what if this happens and have you thought about this that's not necessarily helpful to you right now because i think libra by nature you are not always a risk taker at least that's what i'm getting from this I want to mix these ingredients, but what if this happens? What if this, you know, this could happen, this could pain me, this could go wrong. It's not really helpful. It's saying, focus on the work at hand. Focus, um, if you're doing what you love, there is value in that that will yield positive results. Financially, sure, but building, growing, developing as a person, don't be afraid to make mistakes because ultimately they are lessons that are informing you on how to do it right next time. Yeah, there is a a deceitfulness in thinking that staying where you are now is safe. It's false. The Four of Swords, the card of resting. As I said, it's okay to, to get your ducks in a row. It's okay to gather your thoughts, but make sure it is productive rest. Make sure you are thinking long term, long scale. Yes, you may be in a state of rest. Maybe you maybe you got laid off and you're looking for your next job. It's okay to I almost want to say enjoy that period of rest, but ultimately getting your ducks together to be like, okay, what do I want to do next? Where, what is the ultimate goal? Where am I headed? Some of you are going to sink into anxiety or, or depression or just false beliefs that aren't serving you. If you, by, and again, it's almost like this false sense of safety. Like, well, if I, if I don't move anything at all, at least I'm safe. At least I have an income. At least I have health insurance. At least I have whatever, right? A job. But what it, you're not, again, zooming out. You're not recognizing the full picture. How long are you willing to stay in this comfort zone? And again, it's a false comfort zone. It's a deceitful comfort zone because the clock is ticking. How long have you been here? Have you been in a job that you hate for six years? Like, blow the whistle. Like, that's like, nope, that's not going to work anymore. Awaken yourself. Be woke, Libra. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But yeah, there's a false sense of security in waiting. Oh, I just, I have to wait a few more months. I have to figure this out. I, you know, I, ha- I can't do this. Excuses. There's a false sense. There's a deceitful sense of, of letting the clock tick by. You're missing out on opportunities. You're not, you're not living your best life. There, there's something about not settling here. If you were to look back, you know, 10 years from now, did you choose your life or did you settle for it? That, that's really important here. Something about a cancer is going to play a key role in your life in, in late February into March. Hang out with your cancer friend if you trust them, right? Um, And I only say if because, you know, if you have nine cancers and you don't like any of them, well, don't hang out with them. It's someone who brings positive vibes. It could be a psychic, a seer, a fortune teller. 
Um, again, a therapist, a counselor, someone who's very nurturing and kind. It's, it's your queen of cups. Where did that card go? That was my Cancerian card. And I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Oh, I lost it again. You have too many cards on my table. That's what the problem is. I don't know where she went, but yeah. Hey, oh, there she is. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, water signs. Hang out by water. Go surfing. Go sailing. Go to the beach. Go, I don't know if it's winter where you are, go hang at the, out at the hockey rink. Go ice skating, whatever. Being around water, it's going to help you tap into your subconscious and it allows you to think peacefully, calmly. Don't get caught up in thinking about it too hard because then you're straining yourself. I know that seems uh, counterintuitive, but it's something like don't sink deeper into this state of rest because ultimately it, it's not allowing your mind to rest. Problem solving, decision making. You're at a crossroads, right? But ultimately the only way to free yourself from this is to make a decision. Indecision will lead to like the mental prison, it, sinking deeper into anxiety, depression. So then you have this Six of Cups, I'm, I, which is a beautiful card. I love this card. It typically is a soulmate card. So again, maybe aligning with your, your soul path, your soul career, the person you're supposed to end up with, if you believe in that. It's also past a card of um, family, nostalgia, the past. Some of you need to go and visit your parents. There's going to be something healing about that or your child, depending on how old they are, right? Reconnecting with family and like your soul tribe, even if it's not your literal family, th the people you love and respect. Let's clarify it. You have door to value and the wheel of fortune. You have the 10 of pentacles and you have the 10 of cups. Libra, move towards this idea. You can stop and think about it all you want, but eventually you're going to have to take action forward. It's inevitable. What is the six of water about for Libra? What is the six of, six of cups, six of water? Yeah, spending time with your mother or if you are a mother, spending time with your child. Something about your mother faced the same dilemma or situation that you had. It might be in a much smaller scale. But again, there's advice or guidance or wise counseling there, particularly if your mother is a cancer or if your daughter is a cancer or your son, your, if your child is a cancer. This is an unusual message, but for some of you, you have a person in your life who is actually battling cancer. And it's almost like by going to hang out with them, you recognize that, that time is fleeting. Life is short, so it, it reminds you to go out and make the most of your life because, and I don't predict death on this channel, that's not what I'm saying, but it seems like when you spend time with someone who has health issues or they have some sort of reason why they can't go and chase their own dreams right now, it, makes, it empowers you, it inspires you even more to go out and fight for them. Um, okay, so something, there's a Frank Turner song that's, that's coming out and it does sort of have to do with that. It's, um, what is it called? It's, okay, it's a, it's a dark title, but it's actually a really beautiful song. It makes me cry. I think it's called the, is it called the Queen? Queen is dead. Something about his friend Lex. What the hell is that song called? I'm going to have to tell you. Long live the queen. That's what it's called. <clears throat> that, that song is actually really important here, particularly if those who have lost somebody in their life or you have someone who is ill, right, who needs healing, who, yeah, there is kind of something about the afterlife here. I got to be honest with you. Again, I, I'm not predicting anything. I'm just saying you would know if this was your story. Uh, Long live the queen by Frank Turner. The lyrics of that song are really powerful, but it, it is what I'm saying. Spending time with them. It inspires you to go out and like live, live an amazing life, not just for yourself, but almost on behalf of them too. It could be your spouse. Guys, that's a really deep message. And something about bears is important here. The, uh, maybe it's your mama bear or your baby bear. Something about, yeah, something about, it, it's like a nickname. Like maybe you call them honey bear or, or something about that. Sugar pie, honey bunch. I, I don't know what that's about. Maybe, did you guys dress up as bears for Halloween? The Berenstein Bears, is that something you read as kids? I don't know, something about bears is important and it has to do with that person. That person in your soul tribe, in your family, or that person from the past, you're gonna go and visit something about the, the imagery or the, I don't know what it would be. Something about bears is important there, but it's, it's cute. It's like a funny little nickname or it's like an inside joke you guys have. All right, guys, that's what I got for you. Yeah, go home. Go back to your soul tribe, your, your soul family. Some of you are, are going to be working with a Pisces on home repairs or home renovations, or that may even be the uh, career field you're looking to get into. 
like home design, interior design, uh, realty, renting homes, apartments, what, whatever, uh, something like that. What do they call that? Stripping houses or I forget what it's called. doesn't matter. That's what I got for you, Libras. Please do like, share, subscribe. Let me know in the comments down below what resonates for you. And I will see you very soon for more tarot. Bye.